was there a better or even bigger crowd than that famous day at Wembley in uh, 82? How many were there, by the way? Yeah. Well, you look old enough as though you were uh, you were you were still middle aged, then, weren't you? Good, one or two people there, yeah. Well, Wembley was. Um, I think that was one of my um, defining moments, and it was. Um, I always thought it was one of the most beautiful matches I, uh, there ever was in wrestling. It was um, the best thing about that match was the fans and the crowd. Everybody was so um, passionate about wrestling at that time. Wrestling was huge over here in the UK. I don't know if it ever got bigger. Um, and I, I knew that the best thing about the Wembley match was that um, if it was going to be me and Bulldog in Wembley, and I didn't know for quite a while what, what the matchup was going to be. And I was on the suggested Bulldog. And um, I know that there was... Um, Two options, and I heard about it from from uh, Axaw, Jim Duggan, and Mr. Perfect, who were doing the commentary back in those days. And they said <clears throat> it's either going to be Wembley Stadium against the Bulldog, or it's going to be uh, Washington Cap Center against uh, somebody else. And they didn't know who for sure. And so I thought about it, and I thought, well, I'm going to go in and suggest to Vince that if it's England, that it should be the Bulldog, and if it's the Washington Cap Center, it should be, it should be uh, Shawn Michaels, because uh, they had him in mind for me to work with. And uh, you know, lo and behold, I did find, eventually found out that I was working with uh, Davey, and I told Vince when he first booked the match, I said, uh, you better put us on last. I said, because but nobody also top it. I promised, I said, it'll be the, one of the greatest matches that you've ever seen, period. And I remember he came to me a few weeks later as the summer went on and said, I hope you can top it because you're on last. We changed the whole card to put you guys on last because he basically told me, he goes, I don't think anybody can top you guys, so we'll have to put you on last. And uh, <clears throat> the funny thing about all that is I did have a rehearsal match with Davey before he got injured that summer, and it was probably about end of June or early July, but they, we knew we were wrestling at Wembley and Vince threw us in a, just a match to see how well we could kind of click together and jive. And uh, it's funny because I remember we went to the ring and we had just a shitty match. And just nothing came off right. And it was one of those TV tapings where a lot of things going on, a lot of distractions. And Davey just wasn't uh, up to speed that day, nor I, and we had a really lousy match. And I remember walking back to the dressing room. I can remember Vince looking at me like, it's going to get better than that, right? And it's like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, it'll get way better by, uh, I said, it's just, just an off night. And, uh, it was just an off night. <clears throat> but Wembley um, always stands out because I knew at the time that, um, I knew I had a really strong following here in England, like, I would say my following here in England was just as bit, every bit as strong as Davy's following, and maybe stronger. But uh, it was pretty easy for me to to understand that the way the storyline would go, that the British fans would have to back the the British guy in the match, and that it, as much as fans loved me, they would go for Davy in the match. And uh, at the same time, I also knew I said they don't, nobody knows. It could go either way. I could, Davey wasn't losing too many matches in those days, and you know I was I was the champion, so I wasn't losing too many matches. And it had that nice question mark about like I don't know who. Like when you really think about it, it's like who's going to win? Uh, maybe it'd be a disqualification or a count out or some kind of a some kind of an exit where no neither one of the baby faces is. Uh, loses any value like I could still win and Davies we can there's lots of outcomes that you can put in place that protect both the uh, wrestlers and keep their keep them both strong like it could have been but being on last at the end of that show you almost know that okay it's got to be a clear cut decision for this last match it won't be a count out or something and I always thought I knew I knew months and months before like before the match ever happened I said the beauty about this match is no one knows what's going to happen so you could tell, I could tell when me and Davey got face-to-face -face in the ring 
you could feel it. I could feel it then. It's like this place is alive, and uh, the, the, everyone's like, this is the match I've been waiting all night for because they don't know who's going to win. And when you have those kind of um, that kind of a backdrop for a match, <clears throat> you can't have anything but a great match. I don't, I don't think. But I know that uh, for me, I potted out in my head for for two months exactly, move for move, every single thing I was going to do in that match, and. When I showed up in, uh, you know, I tried calling Davey all summer, and I couldn't get a hold of him. He got injured in about middle of July and went home with uh, some kind of injury or supposed injury. I don't ever know if it was a legit injury or not, but I personally think that I think Davey was in the in the midst of a serious drug problem back in those days, and I think he went home and. Uh, wasted away for about six, seven weeks and pretended he was hurt and did a lot of drugs when he was home and was not, he showed up in Wembley and he was, just to be honest, he was not prepared. He was out of shape a little bit and he was, he was super paranoid and really panicked and I saw him the night before the show and there's an interview in that SummerSlam that, um, that shows just before the match and it's got me talking about Windsor Castle and all that stuff. but. That interview was actually done on Saturday night in the Wembley Stadium and was done as a pre-tape. And we just taped it that night and they played it just before the match like it just happened. <clears throat> but it was on that Saturday night in the dressing room in Wembley Stadium that uh, Davey came to me and basically, because I called him, I said, why didn't you answer my calls all summer? I've been calling you every day. And he's like, and he just kind of broke down and confessed to me that he, that he fucked up and he, he was not ready and he was, really scared that he was going to screw up everything the next day and, and you know he was very fear like he was very afraid of what the, was going to happen <clears throat> and i remember i told davy i said davy you're going to have to just trust me you know trust everything i say and everything i do and just follow trust me and uh i'll help you i'll carry you all the way through this match and i'll make sure that uh we get the whole this whole story of mine is going to come out whether you whether you like it or not, we're going to do this thing my way, and we're, you're going to be a great champion tomorrow, whether you know it or not. And this, you're going to have to follow my my storyline here. <clears throat> and giving Davy all his credit, I mean, he did show up the next day, and he listened to every word I said, and we had this great match. But um, I know that um, <clears throat> um, that uh, for me, that match. Um, was just such a great match. I I know that um, you know fans here in England that were there for it. Whenever I see fans that say I was at Wembley, I always go, "Where were you sitting?" Like I hope you had a good seat because that was maybe one of the greatest matches of all time. And I couldn't have given more or spent more from my body that night. <laughs> Probably that and the Ironman match were the two hardest matches I ever had. But uh, I know I gave it all. And the hardest part of the match was carrying Davy for. 45 minutes. I can remember I, the very first sequence of moves that me, me and Davey and I had done in the ring, and it was only about two minutes into the match that Davey gasped up to me that he was fucked. <laughs> <laughs> he forgot everything. He forgot every single thing I told him at about the two minute mark. He was blank and panicking. And I can remember, if you, you never see Bret Hart, or very rarely anyway, see Bret Hart talking in his matches like so many of these guys today um, that are always whispering right in each other's ear and talking to each other and telling each other what to do. And I, I hate that. That's a fail, automatic, lousy wrestler. You should be demoted to the first match for even being caught doing that kind of stuff. But that match in Wembley was one of the only matches where you do catch me communicating with Davey constantly through the match to tell him what to do next and tell him what to do next. And uh, I did, and Davey followed everything to a T, but uh, it was a, a beautiful match and a beautiful story. And uh, you know, I never forget it. I never forget the fans that were there. And I, I wish I could have been like you, some of you, and sat in the crowd and watched that match. I guess it was the situation that he was in and therefore the action that you had to take possibly, probably gives you that added satisfaction that it was such a great night, in spite of 
Well, you know, I just, you know, I give Davey credit. I don't mean to make people think less of Davey because Davey gave it all that day. And if anything, he rose to the occasion and sucked it up and delivered a great, better match than he ever dreamed he'd pull together. <clears throat> but for a long time, uh, even after that night, Davey never, ex never really thanked me for the match. He never ever said, hey, you know, I, I know you saved my ass that night. And, uh, but he kind of seemed to forget the next day that any of that even happened. And, uh, you know, I never really it felt that he uh, showed much gratitude for everything I did for him that day. And then uh, it was quite a few years later that he, he did tell me, he said, told me exactly what I just told you, that he was completely screwed that day and he had nothing. And he, that I carried him all the way through and he thanked me, said that was all your match. And I, you know, he thanked me for it. And uh, so I know that it was appreciated. Brilliant.